Welcome to our peaceful protest. The psychedelic bard and philosopher Terence McKenna claimed that art's task is to save the soul of mankind. If the artists, who are self-selected for being able to journey into the other, cannot find the way, then the way cannot be found. The following is from The Mask of Anarchy by the 19th century rebel poet Percy Shelley. Rise like lions after slumber, in unvanquishable number. Shake the chains to earth like dew, which in sleep had fallen on you. We are many, they are few. I would like to read to you a poem by Michael McClure that begins with a quote from Henry David Thoreau's essay on civil disobedience. That government is best which governs least. Let man be free of ligaments and tendencies to change himself into a shape that's less than spirit. Let me be a wolf, a caterpillar, a salmon or an otter sailing in the silver water beneath the rosy sky. Were I a moth or a condor, you'd see me fly. I love this meat of which I'm made. I dive into it to find the simplest vital shape. Ah, here's the child. What's liberty when one class starves another? What's liberty when one class starves another? Artist, political activist and founder of the German Green Party, Joseph Beuys, once said, I have come to the conclusion that there is no way to do anything for mankind other than through art. Man is a creative being. It is important to be aware of this, to create an awareness of the fact that he is a creative being and a free being, and that for these reasons he must inevitably behave in an anti-authoritarian fashion. My concept of perception theory confirms that only the creative man can change history, can use his creativity in a revolutionary way. Art equals creativity equals freedom of man. I would like to conclude by reading to you a poem about the Highland Clearances by Sawley MacLean, acclaimed as the father of the Scottish Gaelic Renaissance. Hallig. The window is nailed and boarded, through which I saw the west, and my love is at the burn of Hallig, a birch tree, and she has always been. Between Inver and Milk Hollow, here and there about Ballahorn, she is a birch, a hazel, a straight, slender young rowan. In Screpidol of my people, where Norman and Big Hector were, their daughters and their sons are a wood going up beside the stream. Proud tonight, the pine cocks crowing on the top of Knock and Ra, straight their backs in the moonlight. They are not the wood I love. I will wait for the birch wood until it comes up by the cairn, until the whole ridge from Ben Yalika will be under its shade. If it does not, I will go down to Halleck, to the Sabbath of the dead, where the people are fre frequenting every single generation gone. They are still in Halleck, Maclean's and Macleod's, all who were there in the time of Mac Gill Cullum. The dead have been seen alive. The men lying on the green at the end of every house that was, the girls are wood of birches, straight their backs, bent their heads. Between the lek and ferns, the road is under mild moss, and the girls in silent bands go to Clachan as in the beginning, and return from Clachan, from Suishnish and the land of the living, each one young and light-stepping, without the heartbreak of the tale. From the burn of ferns to the raised beach, there is clear in the mystery of the hills. There is only the congregation of the girls keeping up the endless walk. Coming back to Hallig in the evening, in the dumb living twilight, filling the steep slopes, their laughter in my ears a mist, and their beauty a film on my heart. Before the dimness comes on the Kyles, 
and when the sun goes down behind Duncanna. A vehement bullet will come from the gun of love and will strike the deer that goes dizzily sniffing at the grass-grown ruined houses. His eye will freeze in the wood, his blood will not be traced while I live.